Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to my request video. Um, I thought it was a really good idea to do one of these request videos again, at least up until Heroes Fest, because I don't have much to summon, I don't really have much going on, I'm still farming the same thing that I was doing before. Um, so I thought it was a really good time to be doing one of these videos. Now, I have done some top 5, top 10 lists in the, in the past. Um, but I haven't done so in a very, very long time. I think it's actually a pretty pretty cool idea, a pretty neat idea, um, especially to make updates to these lists, especially if now that I have more more knowledge of the game like than before, than previously. Um, you know, as you play the game more, you, you learn more things, and you think, you know, originally a monster that wasn't so good for something before might all of a sudden become really good because you you learned a certain mechanic in the game or some, some, some shit like that. Um, so this is a list I haven't done before. This is a list of the top, just the top five. Um, I decided to keep it too short because if if it's like top ten, then that's that's quite a lot of monsters already. Like there's not that there's there's not that many nat fives. Uh, so this is just the top five of what I think are the most useful all round nat fives in the game. Now, in my personal opinion, I think the best of the best monsters in the game are the ones that excel at a certain task. Like, if they're the best of the best at a certain task, then those monsters I would definitely rate higher than the monsters who are, um, like, you know, good for all around or some, some, some something like that. Um, but this is a list of monsters that are going to be useful all around. But they, these monsters can also happen to be the best of the best at a certain task. So, um, monsters that are, that are pretty much, like, excel at a, at a, at a task but is also useful all around are probably going to be most of the monsters on this list. Um, so first monster we have here, I'm going to go through one of each element. Um, just a spoiler, there's going to be two fire, two water, and only one wood. Uh, there's, you know, wood's kind of sad. There's not that, that many super, super good nat fives. Well, there, there are a few nat fives that are like good at certain tasks, but there just happen to not be as many nat fives that fit this criteria. So first monster we're going to take take a look at is the Fire Siegfried. Uh, this guy is probably like you know when you see Elemental Edge, you know he's good for everything because you can Elemental Edge means you nuke everything the same. Like he treats anything as if he has Elemental advantage against it, and um, he he has a shit ton of attack. He has 4k attack, so he has the highest base attack out of all the monsters in the game. Um, he has morale boost on his first skill. I you know I'm big fan of morale boost. I think morale boost is like, morale boost is probably my favorite skill like out of all the three star skills in the game. Um, it was like this for a long time. It was before I got into like this farming craze, but ever since I started the game, I, I thought morale boost was like the greatest thing in the world. And it, it still is. It still pretty much is the greatest thing in the world. It makes farming so much faster. And he has morale boost combined with elemental edge combined with his high base attack means that he's, he's this insane farming machine. Um, so he basically, what he excels at the most in the game is farming. And the reason why I picked him is because he's so good at farming, he can, you, you can use him to farm anything. Like, he, you can use him to farm, uh, like, farm story maps, you can use him to farm all the golem stages, you can use him to farm, you know, all the elemental stone stages, star stone, you can use him to farm, like, you know, secret dungeons, you can use him to farm... Did I just say secret dungeons? Oh shit! I mean Guardian Dungeons. God damn it! It's like my 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 um past is coming back to haunt me. Um, and you can use them to clear um you know if you're trying to get through like lower tier Astromon League really fast, you can use them to clear the lower tier teams really fast. Cause like after first attack, if you have them like on a siphon set, it's gonna be insane. Like cause after first attack, he's gonna have a full bar, and then the second attack, he's just gonna like absolutely wipe everything. And just like two turns, you win the arena fight. You know, like what's it? It doesn't get faster than that. And yeah, he's just really, really good. Um, he's also a very good fire nuker. Like if you just straight out want a fire based, like just a fire element nuker, and he's just a straight out good nuker. Like because he has high attack and he has elemental edge. Like it's he's just he's good all around. So um, I decided to pick him as my first monster for for fire because of how for um, you know best all around monster in the game. This is not in any order, by the way. Like, there's no, there's no five, four, three, two, one. I'm just gonna go through the, um, go go through them 
Like I, I I probably rate him number one. Like it's, but that's that's just my my personal opinion. Uh, water, I'm definitely gonna have to pick water for Stephanie. You know, this this probably is not uh, a surprise to anyone because pretty much everybody knows how good this monster is. She's a very good all around healer. You can use her for pretty much healing anything because even if she has elemental disadvantage, like if, even if she's the only one with elemental disadvantage, you're gonna be building her like really tanky anyways. And she heals for 10% of her own max HP. Like, everyone heals for 10% of her HP. But, you know, if you think about it, if she has a high HP pool and people are hitting her, and she heals for 10% of her HP, uh, she's still going to be, like, healing quite a lot of her own HP. So she has really good self-sustain as well. And, um, you know, even if you're bringing her into ele element disadvantage, like, she, she can still, if you have, have her, like, you know, gemmed really well, have her evil 3, she can basically survive because you know she has like 2800 base defense so that's extremely high for uh well actually no it's she's a balanced monster but like she has she has good amount of hp and high amount of defense um also a decent amount of attack if they gave her even less recovery then she's going to be too op so i guess that's kind of fair um and yeah she's just a really good healer you can use her to heal absolutely everything she's a passive healer like she's the best passive healer there is i think well yeah she she's better than uh than 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 fire sensing yep so 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 we're good uh yeah she's I, I don't think there's too much to say about her now the wood monster that i i chose there's there's only gonna be one um is gonna be wood balrona now you might think that like seal is kind of useless but the thing is the thing that i i really think she she's super good good at is obviously um the thing the one thing that she excels at is probably arena defense because she is a morale boost monster she has morale boost seal um meaning that like you know this is mostly a pvp skill meaning that she's going to be very very good she has a 50 percent morale boost and she's also um like has really really nice stat distribution like this is this is just perfect like you know, really high HP, really high defense. Well, not super high HP, but like for a defender, this is this is pretty good HP. Um, a decent amount of attack, so she can be somewhat annoying. But you will you still won't target her first. Like she'll do some decent damage to you, but you you probably won't target her first because of how you know how tanky she is, and she just like is is a complete nuisance in PvP defense. But the reason why I chose her for all round monster is because um, this 50% morale boost is just is just too valuable it's it's quite it's quite uh it, it's quite good like it's just you can use the the, the reason why um the, this morale boost is so strong is because you can use her pretty much as like a sp battery what this means is if she gets her bar full and then she does her aoe um all the hits are going to generate more blue souls for your team so you can basically bring her into any one of your um, teams, like you know, if you're running for for dungeons early on, and that can generate a lot of a lot more SP. Um, in the late game, there's actually some like you know a, a, this this niche use that I found for her that can you can actually bring her and put her on a siphon set, and because she has she already has a 50% morale boost, you only need enough d damage on the siphon set to basically boost her bar by another 50%. Or even not boosted by 50%, and maybe you can gamble a little bit. But I think it might be possible to reach 50%, depending on which level you're farming. And basically, just make it so like she she just doesn't kill the monster, and then still gets a full bar to do her AOE the second turn. What this does is um, there's a mechanic in the game where more gold is generated when you hit the mo a monster more times. So what this means is if you have another monster, an actual farmer, like. For example, what I use um, with the fire gen to like farm super super fast, um, you can have her combined with another SP like you know like just nuke her that will just clear the wave, and then on the on the first turn um, the gen's gonna kill something obviously because he's like built full damage, and uh, you know I'll generate some blue souls some gold then, and then like next turn we're gonna have like two monsters with full bars spamming their AOE. And all their hits are going to hit the monsters, and that's going to generate a lot more gold. So I think that's that's one of the uses you can use her for farming um, later on in the game. And she's also like, you know, I think I think she's just yeah, she's she's uh she's cool as fuck as well. So we'll we'll, we'll give her that. We'll give her style points. I'll I'll, I'll go in reverse. Um, 
Now this 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 next pick might be a little bit boring because it's kind of the same thing. It, this I picked Water Arthur as this as a as another um, as another best all around monster, kind of for the same reason as the as the uh, Wood Balrona. But I think he, if if I had to rate him for a best all around, I would actually rate him higher because he's balance type, meaning that you can actually even build her as a, a Bat, build him as an attacker or a farmer if you want to like it's possible to actually use him if you have like a siphon set or something um, you can actually use him to like farm b8 and he the, like it, you just put like triple attack or something it's not super super hard to gem siphon with triple attack you don't need to worry about crit rate substats or anything like that um, and basically it'll, you can you can use him to like you know speed farm b8 it might be possible to speed farm some certain stages that don't require any sort of uh, uh, any sort of other like elements that only require water. So something like maybe Pagos Coast farming. Um, I mean, he's going to be inferior in terms of farming to like you know Fire Siegfried or actual farmers like you know Dark Mona, Fire Jin, those type of monsters. But uh, I think he can definitely do that job if you really want him to because of, of how he's. He's got a decent amount of attack, and um, you know he has that 50% morale boost. And as I ex explained earlier, you can also pair him up with an actual, you know, SP SP Siphon Farmer, um, not SP, yeah, Siphon Set Farmer. I mean, um, and then I, I get confused because the skill that like the Fire Gen had used to be called SP Siphon until they changed it and called it Morale Boost as well, and then turned the new SP Siphon skill into SP Siphon. Uh, if you if you haven't if you guys haven't been playing before before then or if you don't haven't really read the skills before then 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 you're probably confused as hell like the, the skills used to be named differently but then they took the names of the old skills and gave it to the new skills that's that's kind of why um, so I think I think he has more uses than the wood bell runner but you can actually use him in the same way kind of basically build him with enough damage just to not kill anything and then you can do that same gold farming trick um, you know late game as well so I think he's he's definitely another really really good pick for best uh, all around nat 5 now my, my fi last and final pick is going to be the fire Odin um, reason why I think this is really she's really good all around is because the the debuffs armor break and attack down are super super valuable pretty much everywhere um, it's very good in PvP. It's it's good in well in cer some scenarios. It's good in um, farming. C certain certain things like early game. It's good in farming. Late game, it kind of slows your your runs down. Um, it's really good in Titans. It's good in Colossus. It's yeah, and it's, it it's like super. Did, did, I, did I mention it's super good in PvP? Uh, so it's basically this the. It's because of her debuffs. She has an 80% chance to land these two debuffs, and these two debuffs are like extremely, extremely um, valuable. And she actually has some like bonus properties to her that makes makes her like the best of the best at a, at a certain aspect of the game. Um, she's the best in in terms of uh, you know arena defense. I think she's also another like it's actually where she excels. So this actually you know kind of just adds a few points on top because she she happens to be this monster that's like the best of the best at a certain part of the game but she's also really really good um, like you know an excellent top top tier monster and all these other parts of the game so I think she's definitely definitely a really really good pick for one of the best all-around monsters in the game um, there's not too much to say about her she's really OP like her stat distribution is OP her her skill is OP her her leader skill, if you happen to get her as a variant, is super OP. Like, just yeah, that's that's all I can say. Though this color looks really, really weird. Man, this this original color looks way better. Wait, no. Black booty or white booty? No, white booty looks better. Um. Yeah. So so that's pretty much it. Uh, that's just my my list of top top uh. Top five all around Nat fives. I mean, if you if you want me to choose like two two, I'll, I I can actually choose one for each for one light and dark as well, just kind of for fun. Um, for light, I would I would choose. Damn, this is a hard choice. 
All right, I'm gonna have to go with this. I was gonna pick, I was gonna pick Light Indra, but I think Light Purse actually has more better utility for like all around because um, there's a lot of tricks you can do with her. She basically is valuable because she has a 20% ally morale boost, like a team morale boost, meaning that she can morale boost your allies even further. This is really useful for arena defense, arena offense. Extremely useful in arena offense. Um, you can use this in in farming as well to, to actually you know boost up, make sure your bars are always full. Um, you can use this in... Well, you can't use really use this in Titan and, and Colossus. So that actually... The thing is, I think this utility is just so useful everywhere else that I would actually rate her higher than just another, another straight-out nuker. Um, Yeah, I think I think she's definitely a better choice. Like she's 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 so good. Um, so yeah, we have we actually have two Persephone on the list. Damn, Persephone family is just too good. Oh shit, I I think I fucked up. You know why I fucked up? Because I was gonna you know which monster I was gonna pick for best dark all around monster. It was, it was this one. Um, it's going to have to be Dark Persephone again. It's going to have to be another Persephone because per Persephone fa family is just too OP. Moral Boost Predator as a Dark Monster. Um, base base crit damage 100. Plus she all already like she almost has enough attack as the Siegfried. Plus the, the crit damage plus the 40% Predator means that she's going to nuke even harder than, than he does. And she also has a 30% Moral Boost so she's like super super good. Um, plus, she has a more useful leader skill in terms of farming because in dungeons you can increase the crit rate and you can use this in like golems, in dragons, and a lot of um, different things. And it, in, in places where um, you can't use her leader skill, you can actually use another monster's leader skill like boost her crit rate up. So it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. Um, but yeah, I think that was those are just two um, you know I guess honorable mentions for light and dark. But you know probably. 0.01% of the people playing this game have those monsters. Um, rest of us plebs will just have to stick with RVG, alright? Okay, so... Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. That, that's, that's it for this video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I thought it was a pretty cool, pretty fun, fun little video to make. I'll probably be summoning for Heroes Fest very, very soon. It should be tomorrow. And I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll upload it, and I'll, we'll, 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 we'll see what I pull. And next week, hopefully, I'll have my cord, and then we can start some fun new projects. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.